On November 5th, 1983, five men were killed in horrific circumstances when an airlock failure caused their bodies to explode instantly deep below the surface of the North Sea as they worked in a Biford Dolphin drilling rig. It remains one of the most harrowing diving disasters of all time. The men who died at 4am that morning were British divers Edwin Arthur Coward and Roy P, both aged 35, Lucas, 38, and Norwegians Bjorn Bergesen, 29, and Charles Hellefeck, aged 34. One of their dive tenders, William Cramond, also died in the incident. The sole survivor, Martin Saunders, was left with devastating injuries. Decompression sickness, also known as the bends, is one of the greatest challenges of diving. As the diver descends through the depths, the pressure around them increases. Gases such as nitrogen are breathed in until the diver's tissues are saturated, meaning these gases are dissolved within the tissue to the point that they are at the same concentration as the breathing mixture. This changes due to pressure, so the divers must adjust as they move up or down. For divers that reach far into the murky blue, they must descend and ascend extremely carefully. Fail to do so correctly and the consequences are horrible. Decompression sickness occurs when a change of pressure happens too fast, resulting in dissolved nitrogen forming bubbles in their tissues and blood. It can cause excruciating pain, confusion, paralysis and even death. These divers leave the safety of dry land and enter pressurised living quarters, after which they are transferred down to an underwater habitat via a diving bell. Once they are saturated, they will stay under intense pressure and breathe a mixture of oxygen and helium for weeks until their tour of duty is over and they can be decompressed. Life is exhausting, claustrophobic and intense for these divers, alongside an almost constant risk of death. It was a routine procedure on the Byford Dolphin oil rig in which four divers were returning from a dive and exiting the diving bell into their compressed living chambers. The chambers consisted of Chamber 1 in which Edwin and Roy were resting and Chamber 2 Bjorn and Trulls were entering after their work. Chamber 2 was connected to the diving bell by a trunk which the bell would attach to and be secured by a clamp operated by two diving tenders, William and Martin Saunders. In these situations, the pressure must be carefully balanced to ensure the diving bell can be disconnected from the chamber system. The tenders were in charge of the procedure, which should go as follows. The diving bell door is closed. Pressure is increased in the diving bell to seal the door shut. Chamber 1 is closed off from the trunk. The trunk is depressurized to a standard 1 atmosphere. The clamp is released, freeing the diving bell. Despite being experienced in this procedure, William supposedly made a fatal error. Between steps 2 and 3, whilst the chamber door was being closed, William unexpectedly released the diving bell clamp. The trunk was now open to the environment and the chamber, which had a huge pressure difference, and the result was an explosive decompression. All four divers were exposed to a pressure gradient far too extreme for the human body to withstand, resulting in their immediate and violent deaths. The air rushing out of the trunk forced the diving bell from its position, striking the tenders, killing one and severely injuring the other. The deaths of the divers are considered one of the most gruesome deaths in history. Due to the speed of the incident, it is expected that all the divers passed instantly and painlessly, but the scene left behind was horrific. The pressure differential caused three of the divers' blood to flash boil, almost instantaneously killing them. The fourth had it even worse. The rushing air forced his body through a gap just 24 inches long launching vital organs and body parts up to 30 feet away. The medical examiners described some of the organs to be so intact, it was as if it was dissected out of the body. Serving as a stark reminder of the dangers of saturation diving, the Biford Dolphin accident resulted in the formation of the North Sea Divers Alliance, created from the relatives of the victims. The following report was determined the cause of death to be human error, but the Alliance filed a lawsuit claiming there was insufficient safety equipment on board. 
After 26 years of fighting, a report found the chambers contained faulty equipment that led to the accident, suggesting William was absolved of all responsibility. The relatives finally received compensation for the loss of their loved ones.